لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم We are still reviewing some of the <coughs> pillars uh, from the pillars of the Salat and we have done uh, the conditions in the last class so in this class ta'ala we're going to uh, discuss the 14 pillars of the Salat and knowledge can come through two means. The first mean is memorization. And this is the way of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, al Atba' Tabi'een. Like for example, Al Ulama they mention that Abu Huraira radiallahu an, this noble companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to memorize 5,372 hadith. 5,372 hadith by heart. Qala al-Dahabiyu, Allah, al-Huffad, Abu Hurayr radiallahu an. So he is the leader when it comes to memorization of the hadith. Likewise, you find Al Al Imam Abu Zur al Razi, Al Imam Imam Al Jarhi wa Ta'adil, Al Imam Abu Zur al Razi, Qal Ahfidu Mi'atain Alf Hadith, Kama Yahfidu Ahadukum Surat Al Ikhlas. Abu Zura rahimahullah, he said, Abu Zura al-Razi, he's a great imam in the field of the hadith, the science of the hadith. He said, him, he said about himself that he memorized 200,000 hadith. Like one of you memorized Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Shows you uh, the strength of this memory and the precision of his memory, Rahimahullah. Waqal ibn al Jawzi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Abu al Faraj ibn al Jawzi, Rahimahullah. Qal kana yahfid al Imam Ahmad alfa alfa hadith, yani million hadith. Qal al Ulama kana yahfid Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Mu'adam al Ahadith. وكان يحفظ آثار الصحابة والتابعين يعني ليس مليون حديث كلها حديث بل فيها معظمها حديث ثم فيها الآثار آثار الصحابة والتابعين فسبحان الله وقد أجاب رحمه الله تعالى سئل ست ستين ألف مسألة الإمام أحمد رحمه الله سئل ستين ألف مسألة فأجاب بحدتنا ستين ألف الإمام أحمد رحمه الله ابن الجوزي he said that الإمام أحمد he used to memorize one million hadith the scholars they said majority of it is ahadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم plus the athar the narrations from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the like. And they said about Imam Ahmad rahimahullah that he answered 60,000 questions of fiqh from his memory. 60,000 questions of fiqh from Haddatana. He brings the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine the scholars, how Allah blessed them with a very strong memory and precision of knowledge. And there are many examples about other scholars who memorize the hadith. Naam? Yani, taqriban sab'a talaf. Naam. Subhanallah, 
look at the Imam al-Bukhari, the Imam Muslim, the Nasai, the Tirmidhi, uh, Ibn Majah, the Nasai, and other scholars of Hadith. The second mean of acquiring knowledge is by documentation, by writing it down. And that's why the poet, he said, العلم صيد والكتابة قيده العلم صيد والكتابة قيده The poet he said that knowledge is like a game knowledge is like a game so the game you have to tie it down if you don't tie it down it will slip away from you likewise knowledge if you don't memorize it or you don't document it it will slip away from you after this, we're going to go, inshallah, to the 14 pillars of the Salat that Sheikh Saleh bin Fawzan al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah ta'ala, mentioned in his uh, precious book, Al-Mulakhas al-Fiqhi. The summary of Islamic jurisprudence. Qala Sheikh Saleh bin Fawzan al-Fawzan, Al-Rukn al-Awwal, Al-Qiyamu ma'a al-Qudrah. في الصلاة في صلاة الفريضة في صلاة الفريضة. He said رحمه الله تعالى the first pillar is standing if you have if you are able to if you are able to in the obligatory prayer in the obligatory prayer. Why would he say in the obligatory prayer? Can anybody answer? When, when yes, exactly. When you're praying a nafil sunnah, it is not required for you to stand up if you don't wish to stand up. You understand? If you wish to sit, it's permissible and your salat is valid. Even though you're going to miss out some of the reward because the one who's standing is not like the one who's sitting. Sometimes, you cannot stand up. For example, if someone is in a solitary confinement and the ceiling is very low, so this person, this prisoner, Muslim prisoner, he cannot stand up. He can, he can pray while he's sitting. Because here, he doesn't have the ability to do so. And Allah said in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not hold the soul accountable for something beyond its scope. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ When I command you to do something, do the best you can. So that is the first pillar. Second pillar is تَكْبِيرَةُ الْإِحْرَامِ تَكْبِيرَةُ الْإِحْرَامِ Okay, تَكْبِيرَةُ الْإِحْرَامِ is from the pillars of the Salat. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, تَحْرِيمُهَا التكبير That التكبير, تكبيرة الإحرام is the reason for the Salat to be a Salat. Because, so, you cannot drink, you cannot eat, you cannot do things that you can do outside that. Once you say, Allahu Akbar, that's it. You have to concentrate on your prayer. You cannot be doing those things that you would do outside the Salat. Third pillar, recitation of Al-Fatiha. Recitation of Surat Al-Fatiha. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب. There is no Salat for the one who does not recite Fatihat al-Kitab. Fatihat al-Kitab, the opening chapter of the Quran. And the Fatiha is called the mother of the Quran. Why? Why is it called the mother of the Quran? Anybody knows? 
the mother of the Quran, the mother of the Quran. Fatihat al-Kitab is the opening chapter of the Quran. But we're talking about the mother of the Quran. Why? The ulama, they call it the mother of the Quran. Why? Because when you, when you look at uh, Al-Fatiha, Al-Fatiha, yes, comprises of the whole Qur'an in general. You see? Of the whole Qur'an. Because the Qur'an has three categories in it. The first category, Tawheed. The first category, a Tawheed. The belief system. The second category is the story of the prophets and messengers and their nations, right? And the third one is the ahkam, the rulings. Do this, don't do this, right? These are called ahkam. So you have three. You have tawheed. You have the story of the prophet, messengers, and their nations. And then you have the ahkam, the rulings. And if you look at Surah Al-Fatiha, it has that. Even though it's concise, but it has the whole Quran in it. That's why it's called the mother of the Quran. It is Sib al-Matani. Sib al-Matani, the seven often repeated verses, because you repeat them in every rak'ah. Likewise, Surah Al-Fatiha, the scholars, they said it is called a salat the prayer, the prayer, because of the Hadith Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ قَسَّمْتُ الصَّلَاةِ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي لِصْفَيْنِ I have divided the salat between me and my servant into halves. So when my servants say, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ so Allah responds to him. When he says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, meaning, praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. So Allah responds to him, and he says, my, my servant has praised me. You see? So that's why it is called a salah taken from this hadith, Al-Qudsi. Because Allah said, I have divided the salat. He called it salat. Because without it, there is no salat. Without it, there is no salat. Even if a person recites Surah Al-Baqarah, but he does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha, his salat was, will be invalid. Okay. Also, it is called Alhamd, the praise, because it starts with Alhamd. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It is also called incantation. Incantation, Ruqya. Ruqya. Spiritual healing, right? So why is it called incantation? Anybody knows? Why the scholars call it a ruqya? Why? Yes. But why? Why would they? What's the proof? Why would they say it, it, one, it, one of its names is a ruqya, incantation? Why? Is there a specific Ayah from the Quran, Hadith from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi from the Sahaba, anything. Yes, scorpion sting. You know the story, right? A little bit. Do you know the story? Can you share with us? No, I will share it, inshallah. Okay, the story goes like this. Actually, the, the reporter of the story is Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri is one of the narrators of this story. And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he's one of, the, one of the narrators of Hadith. He's well known, Sahabi. So the Sahaba, they were traveling. When they came to this town, they asked the people to entertain them. But the people of the town, they refuse. They refuse to take them as guests. 
And this is very strange to happen because the Arabs, they are very generous when it comes to um, hospitality and the like. So they refuse to entertain them. And Allah decreed that the leader of the tribe was stung by a scorpion. He was stung by a scorpion. So they tried to help him out. But nothing worked. Nothing. They could not heal him. So they went to, they said, maybe these people who came, came to us, they they could have something with them that can help them out. So they went to them, they went to the companions, and they asked them to do, to cure him. They said, we will, on, on, uh, uh, provided that you give us a flock of sheep. That you give us a flock of sheep. Which they did. They agreed that they will give them a flock of sheep. So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Radiallahu an, he recited Surah Al-Fatiha on the man. He recited Surah Al-Fatiha and he got up like there was nothing wrong with him. Actually, the, the, the narration it says that he sprang out, he sprang up into action like a camel who was tied and you untie him. You see? Allahu Akbar. But subhanAllah, it depends who recites. You know, some people, they may recite, but it doesn't do anything. You understand? So it depends on the person's ikhlas, sincerity, yeah, their yeah. iman, their certainty, and a lot of things. You know, a lot of factors. So subhanAllah, with Surah Al-Fatiha, this man who was stung by a scorpion, he was healed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they went, when they went back to al Madinah. They remember, they took this flock of sheep with them. So they went back. They did not touch those, those sheep. They didn't touch them until they, they spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told them, وَمَا أَدْرَكَ أَنَّهَا رُقِيَ How did you know it is incantation? And then he said, give me my share. So they gave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a share from the flock of sheep. You see? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told them, what, what did, how did you know that it was ruqya, incantation? So the scholars, they took from it that al-Fatiha is one of, it is ruqya. So you can recite it on the person who is sick and the like. Spiritual and physical sicknesses. Yes, magic, evil eye, and other than that. And spiritual and physical. So, the fourth one, anybody can tell us the fourth one? What is the fourth? The fourth and the fifth. They are together. Remember, the fourth and the fifth. Okay, after, after Al-Fatiha is, I'm sorry, after Al-Fatiha is the fourth. What's the fourth? Rukur. Rukur. Ruku' is a pillar. Warka'u ma'ar raki'een. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and bow with those who bow. Warka'u ma'ar raki'een. Ruku' is mentioned in the Quran many times. So Ruku' is one of the pillars of the Salat. Okay. Five and six. Rising from Ruku' and standing erect. Okay? So that's five and six. Seven. Anybody knows? Seven. Yes. Go ahead. Seven bones. Can you mention the seven bones? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then your feet. Basically the toes. So this, this is the correct sujood. <coughs> Some people, when they make sujood, they don't put their, their, their nose flat on the ground. You see them. They put only their, for, their, their forehead, but they miss their nose. Or you see them, they don't put their toes flat on the ground. You see it, you know, 
elevated. You know, elevated. Okay. Number eight. <coughs> No, rising from and sitting straight. Rising from sujood and sitting straight. Okay, then after that you mentioned, who mentioned? Yes. You mentioned something. Tranquility. Okay, tranquility. Okay, what does tranquility mean? What does it mean? Tranquility. Anyone has? Uh, yes. You are relaxed in your prayer. Relax in your prayer. Tranquility. Okay. That's number what? Nine, right? Number nine. Number ten. Sequence. Very good. What does sequence mean? Of the salat. For example. Can you recite Al-Fatiha before Takbirat Ihram? No, you can't. Takbirat Ihram comes first before recitation of Al-Fatiha. Or you cannot make sujood before Ruku'. It has to be Ruku' first and then sujood. That's 10. Number 11. The final, uh, no, yes, the final tashahud. Hmm? We already, went, that's the first one. Okay, the final tashahud. Ahsant, very good. Okay, what is the final, can anybody say the final tashahud? Can anybody verbally say it? لا, لا. التحيات لله والصلاة والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي وعلى عباد الله This is the first this is the this is called tashahud and here the final tashahud will be considered a pillar so that is number 11 right yes. number 12 sitting for the tashahud okay 13 Salat al Ibrahimiyah. Can anybody say the Salat Ibrahimiyah? Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, it's good. This is a Salat al Ibrahimiyah. Okay? And it is a pillar. Okay. What is 14? At Taslim. Because the Prophet he says, وَتَحْلِيلُهَا at Taslim. And to make the, the, to exit from the Salat is at Taslim. If someone sp spoke to you after you, you salam out, you can speak to them. Even though it is better to finish your adkar before you speak to this person. Okay, what are the adkar that you say after the taslim? Anybody knows what, what do you say after taslim? Yes. Have you noticed that you finish your prayer with seeking forgiveness? SubhanAllah. And you are, you were in a noble act of ibadah, right? So when you finish the Salat, subhanAllah, Salat is a righteous deed. Okay, now after you finish the Salat, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Why do you make istighfar? Yes. Ahsant. Very good. Because no matter what, no matter how good you are, you're always going to have some imperfection, some deficiency in your prayer. So when you seek istighfar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you for any shortcoming or imperfection or deficiency in your prayer. Now. 
So these are the 14 pillars of the Salat. Anybody has a question? Either on the condition or the 14 pillars. Anybody has a question? Yeah, question. No. Mawana as Salat. Huh? Mawana as Salat. Okay. If the something you can stop the Salat. Stop you from praying? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The thing that will stop a person from praying, <clears throat> one of them in uh, insanity. When someone becomes insane. When someone becomes insane, then this person stops praying. He stops praying. Likewise, if someone was unconscious, right? Some people, they go into a coma for uh, the whole year, subhanAllah. Okay, are they required to pray? They're not required. Right? Because they don't have their conscience. Likewise, a woman in her menses. Actually, it's haram for her to pray. If she, if she prays, she's sinning. So these are some of the things that prevent a person from praying. Because this person cannot pray at this, uh, in these conditions. Now, Likewise, the person who is sleeping. Prophet said, رُفِعَ الْقَلَمُ عَنِ النَّائِمْ حَتَّى يَسْتَيْقِضْ that the pen has been lifted over the person who is sleeping until he wakes up. Likewise, the one we mentioned earlier, the pen has been lifted over the insane person until he becomes sane. Like attacking you. You can defend yourself. If you can repel him without cutting the salat, you can do so. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned the viper. You can kill a viper during the Salat. Yes. Yeah, a, a, sna a snake. Also, uh, no. also uh, the hadith, the uh, black dog. Yes. He walked in front of you because the Rasul ﷺ called no. the black dog as the shaitan. Shaitan, yes. Uh, exactly. You can stop the salam and stop your uh, prayer with shaitan. Yes, exactly. No. Sutra? Sutra? No, as long as you have the sutra, you're, you're, you're good. Yeah, you have the sutra, you're good. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Yeah. Someone wants to walk in front of you, you stop him. Now. Yes. Do you have to say uh, odd numbers? Does it matter? Odd numbers, even? Odd numbers will be better. Okay. You say it three times, for example. Subhana Rabbi al-Ala, al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al in, in sujood. And in uh, <coughs> ruku' Subhana Rabbi al-Azim, three times. So you can say up to ten times. Okay. Sheikh al-Fawzani mentioned that you can say it up to ten times. But three times is fine. Yes, it's fine. Alhamdulillah. Uh, what about if, while you're praying, when somebody is calling you, calling your name? Yes. Uh, what do you do? Uh, in a, uh, like, for example, the scholars, they mention if your mother calls you. Mother. That's what I heard, but I didn't want to ask yeah. the question. If your mother calls you while you are in the obligatory prayer, you don't cut it. You don't cut it. Only, only the nafila, the supergatory prayer. Yes. No. But if there is emergency, like for example, you know for sure that there is a, a, an emergency, you can cut your prayer, even the obligatory, if there is an emergency. Like a fire in the building or something like that. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, when, uh, when you have waswas, the shaitan is like messing with you, you, you during the prayer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he instructed us to spit three times on the left hand side. But this does not apply if someone is next to you. If someone is next to you, you cannot do that. You cannot spit. Because it would be offensive. Yeah, it be offensive. They're not going to like that. So what you do in that case, you just say to yourself, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, to yourself. Try to control those whispers. Now. Also say in your own congregation. Yes. You know there's nobody to your, to your left hand side. Yeah. So I can't do it on No, you can do it. If there is no one next to you, you can do it. In a congregation. Yeah, in a congregation. Okay. Yeah. But you don't want to no. do it as a signal. You don't want to do it and say like sunnah or wudu or however. Yeah, I mean, if, if there is no one on that side, it's okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. If there's no one on your uh, left, then it's fine, inshallah. So, so yeah. Like, for example, you're praying at the end there. Mm-hmm. There's no one to your left. You can do it. No. Your, your mother only. Right. Only the mother. Because of the story of Juraj. You know the story of Juraj in Sahih Bukhari. His mother called him. And he did not respond to her. Okay. Yeah. She made dua against him. But that was during Nawafil prayer? Or? No, Nawafil. It was during Nawafil prayer. She made dua against him. She said, do not take his soul until you test him with the prostitutes. So what happened is the people of Israel, they were after this man because he was a very righteous man. So they were after him. So they sent to him a woman to seduce him. But she was not successful. So she went and seduced someone else, a, a shepherd. So she had a child out of wedlock from this shepherd. So they br- she brought the child to the children of Israel, you know, to disgrace this man in front of them. She said, this baby belongs to Juraj. She lied. So Juraj, he spoke to the baby. He told them, am I your father? He said, no, you're not my father. My father is the shepherd. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made the baby speak. So then when when they saw that, they apologized to him because they went to his place and they demolished it. Yeah, they destroyed it. They said, now we we apologize, we're going to build it of gold and all this. He said, no, I just want it the way it was, from mud. That's it. So they left him alone. Yeah, they see. So the scholars he took from this, that if your mother calls you and you are praying the nafil, you respond to her. But not the obligatory prayer. No. Yes. So this is not the same as your salah, but it's the same as just praying in the name of Allah. No. So I know the kuffar, they sometimes they emphasize something, they, they make a point of something, so they would say, for an example, like they say, you were speaking in English, however, I don't understand anything you said, so I would say, you were speaking uh, Russian. Yeah. So I would say, I swear you were speaking Russian yesterday to me, so I did not understand anything you said. Yeah. So you made a swear, like that you were speaking Russian, even though we know you weren't speaking Russian. Yeah. Is that permissible to say? It's not permissible. It's not permissible. It's not permissible. Yeah. yeah. Because he's lying. Yeah. This person is lying. Yes. 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 But do, while you're doing this praise, every single rakat, do you salam out, pray out? You, yeah, you pray two rakat, two rakat, and you salam out. Okay. You keep going two and two until you reach for eight rakat. Okay? okay. Eight rak- These are the eight the Prophet used to pray in Ramadan and outside Ramadan, right? And then you pray two rak'at after that, that makes it 10, and one more rak'at with her. So that's 11. But you salam out as well. 
Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Allah is with her. Yeah, Allah is with her and he loves with her. Now. That's it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge, righteous action. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.